Hello and welcome to Made by Mamas the podcast. I'm Zoe and I'm Georgia and we're here talking all things parenthood. You know, the real conversations, tips and tricks, products we love and brands we can't live without. Let's get into it. Hello. Good to speak to you again. I mean, I feel like I've only just left you. What a lovely day today was. Um, I know. Me, me and George um, had a very sort of last minute idea about meeting up in London today. I had a voiceover. George went to an event and then I was like, hang on a minute, we can have an hour together. We actually sat and had lunch. I know. Outside. Outside. Oh. We had a little mooch in some shops. It was, it was lovely, lovely wasn't it? We, we actually, and we did like a, a proper job because we actually took a photograph of ourselves together. <laughs> we, do you know what? We are actually so bad at that, aren't we? Terrible. I mean, for people who are supposed to run like an Instagram account, we actually, like, that's like the last, that's like the, the, the least priority. Like it's just chatting, chatting, chatting. Oh shit, we better take a photo quick. Let's I know, take a brilliant. photo. We did it today though. Well done us. We did. Anyway, how are you? How's your weekend? What have you been up to? What have you been doing? I'm all good. I feel like I'm properly properly immersed in the world of reception oh, of, yeah. of Luna School. Today I got added to a group WhatsApp chat yes. and now I'm getting the old like, oh, has anyone seen Roberto's jumper? He left oh my God, that's today. what I get. Oh. And I'm like, oh God, how has this happened? Like, I can't keep up with any of the other groups. And that was so funny because one of the mums in the queue was like, you need to be added to her class group and then you need to be added to um, the school group. And I was like, do I really though? Like genuinely, do I really? Because the admin side of it is, fr- like, I'm already stressed out for bloody Roberto and he's lost his jumper. <laughs> <laughs> Roberto needs to learn to look after his things. <laughs> um, do you know what though? It's so good for reminding you to do yeah. things. So like, yeah. I don't really like get involved, like talking in it or anything like that. But you know, like occasionally it comes up like, remember to order the lunches and I'm like oh my gosh yes shit yeah. better order the lunches or like today when I was late to pick Axel up from school I was like is anyone at school can anyone just tell the teacher that you know I'm running 15 minutes late and it's all fine you know stuff like that yeah. it's really good yeah for. you're right you're right and I do need it and I do need that constant reminder that I haven't done stuff so it's brilliant in fact Luna has her per- first piece of homework tonight we had to decorate a shoe box and and then it's like a memory box and it's like a show and tell thing that she's going to come in and they were like anything that you've collected this summer anything from your whole anything at all and I was thinking oh you haven't got anything so I'm like picking stuff up around the house going have you got a story about this and she was like we got it from a magazine last week no I haven't (laughs) (laughs) it will be fun anyway how are you no I'm really good I'm really good I've had a funny day like from a lovely handbag event then to seeing you having lunch then to meeting a builder then to transporting some window frames to a glass shop then to cleaning the bathroom and then picking Axel up from school you know and you're like this is wow. such a varied day you it did look very glamorous be. when you were when you were cleaning the bathroom though <laughs> oh well, thank you, you did your skin I put my best amazing. pajamas on oh thank you for saying that yeah I, I have I've taken a leaf out of your book and started taking collagen right and I I really think it works I'm taking the beauty pie one I said I was going to take a photo a week after like I've been using it so in a couple of days time I will take another photo so I can compare it but I do my mum said it to me the other day as well she was like oh your skin looks like really glowy but you know you never know if it's sweat or not is it sweat (laughs) (laughs) like a hormonal sweat Collagen doesn't make you sweat. This is this is not a sweat. This is a glow. And I'm telling you now, I would give it three months before you really start noticing. But I've even noticed like fine lines are disappearing as a result of it. I obviously take Jenny Faulkner's brand Collo, which I bang on about. But if you can get, I think it's 10, it's 10 milligrams in one sachet. And you're obviously taking the beauty pie one. And yeah, I don't yeah, know. I'll, swear I'll have it. a little bit of like how high dose it is. But yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I think it's really good. So brilliant. Love it. Want to try it, then do it. <laughs> so, yeah, we've got to get into today's chat because do you know what? This is a subject that's very close to Georgia's heart. It Baking. Is. Do you know what? Can I just say this guest had a Thermomix? She oh, had yes. a Thermomix. She was on team Thermomix like me. Mm. And it was wonderful. <laughs> I'm still on team Boat Ibiza. That's why I can't get on board because <laughs> it's the same price as like a week on a yacht, I think. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> no, no, this whole podcast isn't just about baking, I would just like to say as well. Um, but the person that we're chatting to today was in Bake Off 2018 and she grew up. I mean, some of the stuff she was talking about, about her history and her culture, about growing up in France and just the way that food was so important to her family life. It really did make me think about that whole like sitting around a table 
and ev- you know sharing platters and everyone chatting away and just the way the French live it just seems so yeah. bloody glorious it did sound idyllic actually and if yeah. you're listening to this and you've got like a toddler screaming at you and you're like chucking like pom bears at them to shut them up then please you know we felt the same when we listened to her because we were like oh my god that life is just so far removed from like mine right now yeah it sounds yeah. great <laughs> it does sound great and maybe we'll get there one day in fact my kids are sitting around the table tonight and not sitting in the playroom in front of the telly kids already refusing to eat anything I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get anything down any of their throats because they're like just want to watch a film mummy <laughs> so I'll let you know how it goes so you've got to do this one for me because you've got a fabulous French accent who are we chatting to today Georgia today we are chatting to Manon La Grève. Now, as you know, I am an amazing baker. (laughs) Baking cakes and cooking are just some of the things that I'm really gifted at. No, terrible. That's why we've got this amazing person on the podcast today, not just to talk to us about food, but to kind of give us an insight into her life as a uh, food blogger, a content creator. She has her own uh, sustainable fashion brand. 2018 Great British Bake Off contestant. Today we are chatting to Manon La Grève. Hey, yay! Yay! Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Your little one's 12 weeks old, so... Just in a snapshot, how's it been? Yes, I mean, um, I came to England 10 years ago as an au pair and I had three children. So I had four years old, two years old and a baby. So I thought, you know what? I feel like I've got this. I'm a bit prepared. And then seriously, the first month I was like, oh my God, why no one told me how hard it was? (laughs) It was a bit of a like, woohoo, you know, crazy. But then I feel like, you know, from since she was five weeks old, so we sailed, you know, took a boat to France to see my family. And I feel like from that point, things, you know, started to kind of get a bit easier. Uh, We slowly kind of introduced a bit of a routine and turned out she's a great and easy baby, which, you know, touch wood, she will continue. Uh, So, yeah, it's just been joy, really incredible. (laughs) And um, I mean, motherhood, the journey of motherhood. Are you do you feel like you've got your shit going on are you one of those one one of those mums that looks like a swan but underneath you're paddling furiously like how do you feel with it do you feel relaxed I actually do actually you know I think my personality is quite um, you know very relaxed and whatever happens happens um I think there's always a solution to a problem and so far I feel like Fleur so my daughter I feel like she you know feels it and so I always go to like where she her she you know when she cries and I don't know you know, we have the poo explosions, the car changing, but I'm like, it's okay. You know, doesn't matter. Right. The you poo got explosions. Oh, <laughs> I don't miss those. You mentioned you were an au pair when you came to London. This fascinates me. So you, how old were you? And you were looking after, was it three children? Yes. So that was, again, so I spent 10 months with the family. I was in London in Putney and I was 19 years old. I had a four years old Amber, a two years old George. And a highly primitive baby, actually. He was born at five months and a half. Wow. So that was, when I look back now, I'm like, oh my God, how did I do that? I was, you know, feeding the children, you know, giving the baby medicine. He then was on like a milk pump. Uh, We went to Switzerland. We went away. I mean, gosh, I don't, you know, they trusted me with their heart and their children, which I guess was, you know, very good. But, you know, sometimes at night they would wake me up being, oh, we're going to go to the hospital because the baby's ill. You know, we'll come back tomorrow. So then I looked after the four and the two. Yeah, sometimes they would be babysitting. And I mean, I remember once the baby, I don't know, the oxygen, he was also on oxygen. It started to bip red. And I was like, what do I do? And I tried to call them. No one is answering. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to call an ambulance then. And then, yes, it just arrived and put the oxygen and everything was fine. But you know, when I look back, I'm like, wow, that was quite intense. Amazing, but yeah. intense. Yeah. yeah, really intense. Somebody <sighs> else's somebody else's children, you know, f- could could be quite frightening. But it sounds like you handled it very well. I feel that we're going to get a lot of calmness from you today, Manon. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, just, just tell us what happened between being an au pair and living in Putney um, to when you kind of burst onto our screens in 2018 on the Great British Bake Off. So what 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 happened? Were you were you baking a lot for your family and then realised, do you know what? I can actually do this. I think I'm I might do it for a living. I'm pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, that's about that really. So I grew up in a little you know family in France in Brittany and. My parents have an egg farm. My uncle is a chef. The other one has, um, you know, he's a butcher. 
everyone basically works in food. So, I, you know, food was at the center of our lives kind of all the time. And then I moved to London and started to bake for these little kids. You know, they wanted cupcakes and colorful things, which at the time, 10 years ago, didn't really exist in France. You know, we love our patisserie and things like this, but we didn't have cupcakes, tears cakes. Um, and then, yeah, and then finished my au pair, finished my studies in France. I came back and then found my first English boyfriend, uh, came back to England. Uh, and then, yeah, I just started to work. Uh, then I ended up being a software project manager for IBM. I don't know how I got there, but I did. That's a and change. Then, yeah. <laughs> and then, so that was, you know, my personal career was, I loved working in IT and that was like super fun and very empowering as a woman as well. And I also still loved to bake and I had a little blog on the side. And my friend were like, maybe you should apply to the Great British Bake Off, which is a show I always used to love watching with one of my best friends, Charlotte. And we used to say, imagine one day, maybe you'll be on it. And I was like, what would you do? And, and then, yeah, I applied, got in. I still worked at the same time, so that was a bit hectic. Um, and yeah, just, you know, every every episode I was like, you know what, I'll just do what I can and we we'll just see it through. And I I think I went to the like, quarterfinal. Which I is mean, amazing. that is incredible. <laughs> we we love it here in the UK, don't we, George? Yeah. Back on Ask in, in a week, basically. So that's really exciting. But tell us about being in the tent and what that environment is like. And because you were there, obviously, with you had Prue and Paul that were the judges. So Mary had gone at this point and Sandy yeah. was presenting yeah. as well. So talk us through what that experience is like. Um, so it was quite funny. I mean, the team, the crew was incredible i mean these people they've been working on bake-off for well back in the, it was like maybe t- some people 10 years from the first show to where we were so i was there season i think nine or ten um and yeah i used to remember thinking when we were sitting on the tent being like oh you look very good there you look like you could be on tv you know i feel like it's tv there it's just so surreal um but then when you just start baking i mean personally to me i couldn't care less about the cameras it was just, okay, get into your zone and just try to bake something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was the most stressful um, thing ever as well. You know, when you love something, you present a cake that you've loved and that you've made. And, and then here you are, you have, you know, Paul kind of turning your heart out, saying like, oh, it's a bit bland. And you're like, oh, my <laughs> oh God, <laughs> Paul, did, it, did you ever get the golden handshake? I did actually, I did once for um, a ginger a ginger cake that I had never really made before. I just made it up and I was like, great, that was good. <laughs> you got it. What about behind the scenes? Like, you know, are the contestants helping each other out or are you like really competitive, like looking over thinking, oh no, she's going to beat me or he's going to beat me? No, I mean, our year was actually pretty amazing. On You know, in the tent, everyone was like super helpful, helping each other. I mean, you know, you always think, oh, I don't want to leave because this is fun. And I think everyone wants to, you know, get to the next episode. But I mean, personally, I didn't feel very competitive because I thought every episode is just a bonus, you know. Mm. And uh, yeah, we always used to eat together. So we had, you know, we stayed in a hotel together. And um, I remember I used to call it the Bake Off Bubble. So I had my work, which was crazy. And then the Bake Off Bubble was like, oh, you know, it's beautiful as well. You're in such an incredible environment with lovely people and you just all do what you love, which is baking. So that was that really lovely. And when you hear the theme tune, do, 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 do you get a bit sweaty or do you want to start baking quickly or do you, or does it bring back good memories? Uh, well, after the show, well, I have to say, you know, some morning, some mon- so we filmed at the weekend and some Monday morning, I actually was so exhausted I couldn't actually stand up no. be- from the exhaustion because it's, as you know, you know, long filming days and then your energy is just goes, everything goes into filming that. So, yeah, I think I spent maybe like six, no, maybe three months, three, four months of, I don't want to look at my KitchenAid, you give me anxiety, get yeah. away, please. Um, <laughs> But then, because also you kind of stop to bake for love as well. Yeah. Because you bake for a challenge. And, you know, when when do you bake a, a biscuit selfie, you know, 40 centimetres by 40 centimetres? I mean, not me. Yeah. yeah. It's wow. Not. Well, I would just like to get to a point with my baking where I, where I open up the uh, oven. Firstly, there's something inside it. 
that would help. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> to go, oh, is this going to be burnt? Or are these going to look like anything that can be eaten? Or I just don't understand it. If you're like me and you're not really that into baking, what sort mm -hmm. of what sort of kit do we need? Like, what's a starter kit? Because I haven't even got scales. Uh, well, that could be a good start. Okay. Oh, you know, cups. American baking, I have to say, if you look for something easy, you know, they do just cups. It's in so cups, they just yeah. tell you a cup and a half. Even with children, that's actually such a good way of baking with them. What, is that a mug or? So I'm going to buy you the best present ever. No. <laughs> You're going to hate it. Serve. I don't want a Thermomix. It's the, it's the measuring cup like this. Yeah. And it has all of the, so it has <gasps> like flour and it will say 100 grams of flour, but you fill it up and it just, <gasps> see, all you use is this one cup. It's actually so good. They sell it in Sainsbury's. They sell it in John Lewis. It's amazing. But I've it really is. seen this gorgeous pair of Jimmy Choo's, which could be better. <laughs> no, it costs seven pounds. Oh, right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Send it's it not, over. Great. Yeah, it, it, yeah. I'm not <laughs> buying you like 400 quid birthday present. <laughs> What mean business partner you are. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't need that much, to be honest. You just need that, a tin, a whisk, a spatula, and I'll send you recipes and trust me, you know, it will work and you'd be like super baker now. You mentioned that your whole family sort of work in the food industry in some way. Is that something that you want for your daughter growing up? Do you think you're going to bake with her or do you think, no, this is what I do for a job and I want to keep, you know, keep our home life separate? No, I'll definitely be baking because memories at home. I mean, even when my fiancé comes home, he says, you guys... You just spend your life eating. And I say, yes, we do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of the, you know, l'art de la table, you know, the table, you know, like you're just sitting at the table with all your friends and family and you spend five hours and you have, you know, appetizers, starter, main, cheese, dessert. In France, we actually have the cheese before the dessert. Um, so she'll be definitely growing up in that, you know, love of food and where produce are coming from, um, which, again, you realize how lucky I was everything we had was, you know, from the farm behind or, um, you know, sourced ethically because it's just so close to your home. You know, grandparents always had massive gardens with every single vegetables and fruit you can imagine. They'll make, you know, my mom makes like a hundred jam jars every year because we eat so much jam at home. Um, so yeah, all of the things wow. that I know, yeah, I really want her to kind of grow up, you know, I really want to give that, to give that to her as well as a love of food because I think it's just very important value for me to share with her. Yeah, that's yeah. And so how do you feel about the weaning process? I mean, obviously, Fleur is only 12 weeks old, but have you thought about it? I imagine yes. Yeah, no. And I, I actually asked mum about it. So I only read one parenting book, which is, uh, you know, how French kids don't throw food. I'm not sure if you've read it. No, yeah. that's that no. incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Georgia. So yes, yeah, so basically, it's just, it's, um, it's a nonfiction. It's this American woman. She moved to Paris and she has children and she's just kind of studying the French parent, the French parents. And is this the one that they talk about Le Pause? Yes. yes. What's Le Pause? So basically, like if your baby cries, you pause, you don't go straight to them, you pause and then you go. So then they, they kind of, it, it, yeah, you exp you'll you explain it better, Manon. Yeah, yeah. No, that's it, Georgia. It's kind of, you do La Pause because you want your children to understand frustration from a very young age. So then they more, they understand what it means. Even there's like, basically the French parentals is you create boundaries. So quite strict boundaries, but then inside these boundaries, you have freedom. Yes. So that's kind of the whole, I mean, it's amazing. And you know, every time I was reading that book, I had my fiance next to me and I was like, baby, read, read. He actually <laughs> read the book at the end because I made him read so much stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that's kind of the only parenting would I read. And if you read that book, you're going to see that little children at nursery, preschool, from they are two years old, two and a half, three, they at the canteen, they sit at the little table, they have a little starter, a little main, a little dessert. And that's just how we, you know, grew up with. So I don't actually really remember my mom weaning us. She just kind of gave us, you know, we had little pots and stuff, but I think very quickly she introduced the food that, you know, she had a farm and three kids, you know, to deal yeah. with. So she didn't really have, you know, had the time. Um, so I think I'll do a little bit of, in bracket, proper weaning, you know, recipes. But then I think very quickly I want to introduce her to 
you know more f- every food really yeah that I can. yeah we, we we kind of did that didn't we george yeah more for me out of sort of laziness i've got to be honest with you whereas if i was yeah. having a salmon fillet i would just break a bit off and just put it on and luna and both luna and kit just used to or with the mackerel that i was eating or yeah. you know bits of carrots or tomatoes yeah. or whatever i just put it all on and then they would sort of go for it exactly. so it was more about that but that was just because i didn't know how to make those fancy pots of puree but i think that's amazing i feel like you know sometimes society try to make you feel oh you're a bad mom if you don't you know have a thermo Mix. I do have a Thermomix and love it, but you know, <laughs> there we go. I'm the only one. There's enough one. <laughs> I have one, but I don't. I I don't actually use it to its a, oh. like full ability. I don't think. Maybe we need to catch up, man, on, and you can tell me what it I need can to make be doing. donuts, can't it? I do yeah. make donuts. Yeah, okay. Yummy. It can make everything. So my mum had a Thermomix since we born, so that's why I'm kind of. Okay. I know a bit about Thermomix, and mum makes loads of things in the thermomix so yeah we can have a little chat after okay <laughs> yeah yeah but save it because i'm not interested yeah because i will be asleep sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's fine well, you know as a good thing is also my fiance can use it you know he can make soups so when yeah. i was um kind of when i just gave birth so in my home uh, you know my fiance works in banks so through lockdown he worked you know staying in his room for like 12 hours and i just were there baking cooking and you know serving him plate of food which is very lucky But then when I gave birth, I needed him to make food. So it was really the first time that he properly, you know, used the kitchen. And now he knows how to make a soup with a Thermomix, which was amazing. Um, So, yeah, so that's why it's good also to introduce your whatever hobbies to do a bit of cooking. (laughs) No, I like it. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to this episode of Made by Mamas. Now, where were we? So you mentioned like you read the book, Why F- um, French Children Don't Throw Food. And I guess that parenting style is quite different, I guess, to what we have, you know, in the UK. And your fiance is British, right? Yeah. So did he find some of the stuff in that book a bit like, what? We don't do that. Like, that's not what we do here. <laughs> it's a good point, actually. I think from the very beginning when we started to date, we realized that we had quite similar, you know, values, even through education. And Luke, he's very, you know, st- I mean, he's like very strict. He's like Oxford educated. He likes things to be, you know, square. And I feel like we'd probably be quite similar in terms of parenting. So when he was reading the things on that book, he thought, yes, I like this. La pause, why you don't go straight? To-? You know, he, he loves discipline. Yeah. So... I think, you know, together we will, um, yeah, we will have, we have the same views on educating, mm. which is, which is very good. To me, it's very, again, as being an au pair, which is very different to being a mom, like hands down, it's so much easier as an external person in your family to look after other people's yes. children, as you yes. know. Um, but when I walked into that family, they, the mom, she did positive education, which was, you know, saying yes to everything. Well, kind of in a nutshell. To me, which sounded like, oh, what? Saying yes to everything. And then I just started to give these kids boundaries and they loved it. I had no problem with the three of them. Um, And to me, it was also for the safety. You know, if we're walking on the street, you're on the scooter, you stay next to me. And that's the rule. That's the boundary. It's not, yes, you're free whenever we are home and do some things. But, or, you know, when you're sitting there, I I used to like walk after the little boy and give him food when he was two. And to me, it was like, oh, no, no, you're going to sit down and you're going to eat your food. And yeah, I, I guess that's how I've been, you know, I've been brought up like this. You respect your elders and you sit down, you say hello, please, thank you every time. Um, and yeah, we'll see what happens with Fleur, but I think it's probably going to be quite similar. It's really lovely to hear the way that you were kind of raised and all of those morals and the values and stuff. I had a, I had a French pen friend that I used to go and stay with. And, and, and I loved ah. what you just said about there was, her family were quite strict. They were quite traditional, but mm-hmm. we had a lot of freedom within that, um, those, those boundaries within. So we were, for example, I love the way the French will be like, you know what, there's a glass of wine. Why don't you have a sip? Why don't you have, uh, you know, a couple of fingers? You can drink that in the meal, in the evening. So it's kind of yeah, done in that in contained front way. Of in yeah. front of them. Whereas in England, it's slightly different, or at least in the UK, it's slightly different. We we do things differently. And then there's that, there's that argument or that conversation around whether we've got more of a problem with, say, binge drinking or mm-hmm. um, binge eating, or, you know, just like various different yeah. kind of behavioral patterns, I guess, because of the way we've been brought up. 
you know, yeah. not allowed to drink till you're 18. And, but in France, yeah. it's like, oh, you can drink. <laughs> nine, yeah. 10, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, like now we are so, we're so much more exposed and open to all of these different ways of mm. living. And I think now we can kind of pick parts of you know other cultures and other traditions and be like oh no I really like that like when mm-hmm. I read that the, the the book about French children don't throw their food I loved that La Pause thing yeah. but that's probably what I would do anyway yes, but reading would. it I just thought oh my gosh that's validation oh okay some other people yeah. do do it it's not yeah. just I don't know I just re- yeah and like you say as well like there's certain things that I really like doing I love we all sit down and eat together in in the mm. evening I love mm. that I didn't do that with my parents growing mm-hmm. up but I've wanted to do that for my kids. Do you do that every night, George? Yeah. That's, you? So, that's so lovely. Yeah. But what time yeah, do you have yeah. to eat your dinner then? No, so we eat our dinner really early. So we eat at like five o'clock, 5.30. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. We're just in, yeah. in that thing. James yeah. then will eat again like yeah. later. He'll have, you know, he'll probably like have another whatever it was that we ate at but that's good for him because yeah. he, he needs to eat more. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's just kind of suits us. We got into it. Mm, we got into it during lockdown, but we did used to do it before maybe a few times a week. But now I just really like it. And I yeah. think, oh no, this is one of those things that I really like. This feels right to me. You all eat the same food. We all eat the same food. It is amazing. So yeah. yeah. Man on. It is. Yeah. That's am- <laughs> is, that a, is that a thing? Is that, yeah, is 100%. That- I mean, I mean oh, also we were not allowed it. TV or radio. It was, I just have so much like fond memories of growing up, you know, coming back from school. And well, first, also another thing about that, as you said, Georgia, is, you know, this, in England is very much snacking. You know, children, yeah. you oh, want no, to my use... children snack. They still <laughs> snack. <laughs> my son was eating an ice lolly at 9 a.m. yesterday. We haven't got it no. all together. <laughs> but, I mean, but to be honest, I have to say, that's going to be something that is quite difficult for me to try to introduce. So in France, you have breakfast, lunch, goûter, so at 4 p.m., and then dinner later. But because in England, I mean, she's going to see all of the children snacking on something, and she's going to be like, where is my snack? Um, so that's another thing in the book. Yeah, in France, you don't snack. You just, no. you know, you have your meals. Maybe you have it um, at, at, at 10. You might have a, an encar. You might eat, you know, an apple and... And something yes. at school, sometimes they would give you an apple at 10 and then you had lunch and then goûter at four. And goûter is one of my favorite meals. You know, we used to come from home. Mom, she'd made some like rice pudding or something, or we'll eat like half a baguette with brie and butter. I mean, that's oh so French, God, but that's that so true. Oh my God, that dreamy. <laughs> half a baguette with butter? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yummy. <laughs> oh, this, yeah. is, this, is, this is what happened when I was at school. In, I went to school in Switzerland for a year. Okay, and yeah. um, I know different country, <laughs> but no, similar, no, but similar, similar, similar things. Sure. And I ended up literally becoming a baguette fiend. Every opportunity, <laughs> they were just like handing baguette out. I was like, yeah, baguette over here, baguette over here with butter. It's just like, my, it's my favourite thing. And when it's my ski season in Val that is all I ate. It is. It is. Oh, it's so, and, you know, we, it is. Well, we never had biscuits, you know, shop bought biscuits or snacks or anything. Because, yeah, we just had baguette, cheese, um, Maybe oh, you know, yes. rice yes. eating dessert or things like this that mum would would have make um, before for the week. And um, Manon, just moving on from food to language, mm-hmm. um, will you or have you or do you speak to Fleur in French? And and does your fiance speak to her to her in English? Like, what have you what have you kind of decided? So yes, a hundred percent. And well, there's a few reasons why I knew I was always going to speak to her in French. At first, is because my parents don't speak English. So most of my family actually does not speak English. Um, so, you know, I want her to have a relationship with, you know, her grandparents. And secondly, because I think, you know, it's part of her culture because she's, you know, Franco-British. And thirdly, is because I think that's probably the greatest gift I can give her as her mom. And, you know, I think people... It always, you know, makes me so sad when people tell me, oh, yeah, my mom is Italian. Do you speak Italian? No, because I don't think people understand, but it's hard, you know, teaching. I know it's going to be a lot of work from me and from Luke to make sure that she, you know, takes on the language. And I've been reading a little bit about it and kind of, you know, doing some research. But one funny thing that happened from the moment I knew I was pregnant, every time I saw a baby, I spoke to the baby in French right. so weird 
and so now I've, and I've been in England for 10 years. I think in English, I write in English, I do, you know, most everything in English. Um, but yeah, I guess, I don't know, it's nature. It's my mother kind of instinct that really, you know, kicked in. So you'd, you'd go and hover over the, and go, oh, petit baby. Uh, yes, and just start exactly. this, like this with the woman's like, she's not French. She's from yeah, Croydon. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> the baby's like, eh? what? <laughs> And so what you said you've been reading up on it. Mm-hmm. We've had like a few people message us like, you know, how, how do I go about yeah. this? Like what, what, like, so what have Tips. you been reading? I guess in my head, yeah. does it, does it mean that their speech comes on, comes on quicker or slower? Later, or yeah, like, yeah, yeah. How yeah. does it all work? Yeah. So yes, as, as you said, so definitely because they have to learn two different sets of vocabulary. And, you know, there's as much time in a day where your kids can actually soak up your language. So now the kid has to soak up two different languages, so two sets of vocabulary. So usually they attempt to speak later. You know, bilingual, like true bilingual people, which is speaking as a native, uh, attempt to speak later. Um, mm-hmm. But then, for example, there's also rules. That, sorry, my R's are always quite difficult to say. So, so the rule at home is, so I will only speak to her in French. So in any environment, if we are if we are around with other people and stuff, I will always speak to her in French, and Luke will my fiance will always speak to her in English, because again I've been told from teachers who work, for example, at the you know French lycée, French schools in England, they say usually a bilingual home means that the children are so you know they are so much quicker to switch between the two languages. Mm-hmm. As before, I thought let's make a home a French home. And then she'll get the, you know, English, British from the outside. But I think it's also important for my partner to speak to her in, you know, his language, which is British. Um, so that's kind of one tip, set up rules. Yeah. Um, so then, you know, the child know who is speaking what. Then I think the other thing is, look, you know, it's his like 500 days on Duolingo, you know, the app where you can learn languages. Yeah. Yes. So he's been super actively learning French. So then Aww. when I speak to her, he'll understand what I mean. And I think in parenting, it's yeah. so important because yes. you want him to know exactly what I've said, why you know, we need to be on the same page. Uh, so, yeah, so having a support network like your partner or, you know, other people. We have also friends. It's the same. They're Franco-British. So we, she already has little friends who are going to speak French. Mm-hmm. So to make it, you know, usually kids, they don't want to be um, different from other children, don't they? So I think that's good to introduce other people who are similar to them so they can feel, oh, yeah, that's normal. That's, you know, that's good. I can speak French. It's not weird. No one is going to pick mm. out on me. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, and then finally, like books. So I already have so much French books. Um, and then maybe, well, TV, it's more of a one-dimensional platform. So you don't actually learn as much by watching TV than interacting with people or with apps and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of my... Work at it, basically. Oh, I love that. This is a, it's so, that's so oh, fascinating. And for, for somebody that went, you no, know, as I said, I, I got to go to this amazing school in Switzerland for just for one year. I went at, at the age of 12. I came back after the first term. All my lessons were in French. And my mum picked me up from the airport and I was speaking virtually fluent French in three months it took. And it's the best gift that I have ever been given. I've forgotten all the language now. I mean, when I'm in <sighs> France, I feel like I really need to soak it back up and I really feel... Yes back in back in that zone but at the time it just stood me in such amazing stead you know in life doing the ski season whatever I wanted to do I just knew that I had it it was great it's just such a wonderful gift to give to somebody absolutely really is it is and and also another thing that it's never too late so you see you were 12 and you learned Mm. it which is amazing Mm. so Mm. I think they say from birth to three years old is kind of premium if you can yeah but then after until you're a teenager you can soak up a language, you know, okay. super quickly. Yeah. So yeah. it's, you know, it's never too late. Like it's always possible to, you know, make it work. And yeah, uh, yeah to Brilliant. all of the kind of parents out there who are not sure and just do it, please do it. <laughs> <laughs> Manon, you have been super organised. And before you came on, we asked you to send us the best piece of advice you've been given as a parent or you'd give to another parent. And you already sent it to us, but... <laughs> Do you want to share it with everybody? Because it was wonderful. Oh, yes. When all of my friends have had babies, they said, you know, do not wish any moment away. As if, you know, my baby is not doing, you know, she's not sleeping through the night. She's not sitting. She's not doing all of these things. But 
it doesn't matter because we've really enjoyed every single step of you know her life and I think there's so little for such a short amount of time so mm. I've really embraced as you know the newborn phase and um yeah I think I'm going to really embrace every single stage without thinking oh I wish she was doing this or yeah or you know why oh she's 12 weeks why is she not doing her nights yet or you know I don't let this stress me out I just really focus on her and us being happy as a family and yeah, not looking too much into the future, looking into the present um, more than the future. Stay in the moment. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. And what about your favorite products? The products that you are absolutely loving at the moment? Okay. So I know I said my number one is not a product, it's a bit corny, but basically it's time because my partner took six months off. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. So he got six months paternity leave from his company, which is incredible. Um, God. Yeah. And Every time, so he works in banking and every, he called all of his clients to kind of tell them that he was leaving. And all of the men, I mean, everyone was saying, wow, I wish I had done it. Well done you. And I think with so more men good. doing this, mm. it's going to be good for us mums, mm. yep. you, you know, as well, because it's not just us who have to take on yeah. you know, the full job of looking after a baby for, you know, a year or however long you take your maternity yeah. leave. So that's been, you know, why we're doing so well as well, because I've had another pair of hands. The five products that I've been absolutely loving. So I think number one is my silverette. I don't know if I said that properly. It's like, you know, little silver cups. Yeah. That I put on my nipples. Oh, and yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because, so, you know, I'm fully breastfeeding and I have been for the last three months suddenly. And uh, that really has saved my breastfeeding journey. Because as you know, you know, when you start breastfeeding, it hurts and it's painful. And these little things, they just, because silver is, um, mm. it heals, it has healing properties. Mm. Um, it's also, I think, a clean, you know, antibacterial type, all of the things. Uh, so that's amazing. And all of my friends, I've got them through me. They're like, oh my God, this is so good. Uh, so yes, it is. Then secondly, I love this snooze cloud. I don't know if you know which one it is. The snooze cloud. Yeah. It's like a little cloud, which does um, white noise. Um, oh, yes. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. yes. Yes. I yes, know. Yes. Yeah. Snooze cloud. And it also does a little um, light at night. So then when I breastfeed, I just turn this on, breastfeed, and then put her back and put the white noise. So that's been super good, super helpful. Oh, yes. The docker toot. You know, the former sleepy head? Yes. This one yeah, before? yeah. We loved. Yeah. Yeah. We had. I had sleepy head with both my children. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Is this the new? Is this? Is it made by the same people? Yeah, but I don't. Yeah. So for some reason, they rebranded it to Docker Tot. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. So we've and we've been traveling away so much. So she always has her little bed wherever we go. So we yeah, did a amazing. tour of Brittany, and every night we slept in a different hotel. But because she had her little bed with her, she, she never had fine. an issue, you know, to sleep. Like she slept yeah. on the boat. We put her on the table, and so funny people come by and it's like. Oh my God, like, how amazing, you know, how old is she? We're like, she's five weeks. And they look at us being like, are you already traveling? We're like, yeah, you know. Um, so that was fun. Uh, oh yeah, a pram with big wheels. Travel prams are really good. But again, when you go in rough terrain and everything, you just yeah. need big wheels on the beach. You know, we took our big silver cross everywhere. And also it's a bit more clunky. It's just so much easier, I have to say, with right. a newborn especially. Is it not heavier though? It is, it is heavier. but. Um, so when we were in Paris, for example, we climbed up all of the steps of Montmartre, you know, when you go Oh my God, top. did you? My favourite. <laughs> yeah, it's so nice. Isn't but it? at least I knew that she had a bed to sleep in all day. So that's why it allowed us to travel everywhere. So it worked. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. I hadn't thought of it like that. But yeah, I guess yeah. like, yeah, when, when Gigi was little, we took her for like a little stay in a hotel and she slept on the sofa in the room in yeah. one of those little things. And yeah, yeah it does. It is, it's incredible. It's, uh, I mean, I, I actually took the larger one um, to Mykonos and it yeah. took up a whole suitcase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, well, how silly, but it was worth it because well, yeah. I thought, oh, I'm relaxed, she's going to sleep. I mean, I probably wouldn't do that again. But, you know. No, <laughs> first time mum though. Yeah, yeah first time yeah. mum, exactly. First time mum and all. You live oh. and you learn. So yeah, and oh. I think my fifth one was LV Pump. 
I'm yeah, the LV. LV George pump. loves yeah, that. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I actually just gave um, my LV pump to a friend um, and she messaged me. She's used it for the first time. She's like, oh my God, it's so good. She's on her, you know, this is her second time round and she had a different pump the first time yes. round. She's like, oh, it's so much more gentle and on, on her boobs. And obviously she's got a toddler, so it means that she can you know play with him well yeah yeah i mean wow such a good invention it is thank god women from going in you know to go to tech to create products like this yeah exactly (laughs) yes without that noise as well yeah Uh, Yeah. i know you can walk around the supermarket (laughs) yeah oh you can walk around the supermarket with it you can walk around the supermarket with it on yeah that's what i used to do well i was at the weddings the other weekend we were three breastfeeding mum and we all of us we had our you know breast we had our elderly pump you know through the dresses we're like yeah time (laughs) oh brilliant brilliant and it's like what was the um what was the one that i had i can't remember the brand of it but luna used to put it on and it used to go eh Uh, and then she used to go like that and do this like marching thing and I'd be like this isn't something to dance to this is for my breasts yeah (laughs) oh bless her trying to help maybe <laughs> Manon thank you so much for coming on it's been an absolute treat to chat to you we've loved every yeah, second of it and of um, I wish thank you all you the best of luck me. when's the wedding uh, next year 25th okay. of June in France I wanted a festival wedding ended up with a castle but hey yes. still gonna be. <laughs> um thank you thank you for no coming worries. on and good luck with everything it's been an absolute thank joy you. have a nice day you ladies <sighs> doesn't inspire you to just like grow stuff in your garden and like you know pick the vegetables and cut yeah. in and make a lovely soup in my head it's kind of like <laughs> the darling buds of may but in france that's how yeah. i that's how i see it but what i what i love most about that whole thing was the, the the language around the food and like how important food is you know as somebody that's battled an eating disorder yeah there were so many years when i used to say oh you know i only eat to live and it's not important to me and I, if food and like being around a table with friends and family like we don't we don't really have much else you know we the whole pandemic has kind of proved to us that actually we needed to stay at home and eat around a table like and have those conversations yeah. it's so and i think culturally it's so lovely to do that for your children as well yeah, and I've still got I the table do. that I grew up eating around that's sitting in my kitchen now. And I, every Have time I look you? at it. Yeah, oh my, my dad. Gosh. My dad still just sits where my dad sat. And that's <gasps> all my memories around that table. So oh, it's so special. It is actually, no, it really is. And actually, when I think back to like growing up, like going around to my grandparents' house and what, you know, my nan used to make me and like all of that, actually, there is so much of my childhood that was centered around food as well. And I think, yeah, like it is, it's the time when you get down to actually to, to sit down and actually speak to each other. Yeah. I think we're all so guilty, aren't we, right now? Like, I mean, James and I will sit next to each other in the evenings. We'll watch TV and we'll be on our phones at the same time. We might yeah. even have the laptop out too. Like, it, it's really bad. It is really, really bad. But I guess sitting down and and eating at the table is a really good opportunity to just catch up. And even if it's 15 minutes where yeah, exactly. you're all just, like, solidly, like, chatting... Um, but also that yeah, whole Le Pause thing. I reckon I, <gasps> yes. did, I reckon I did Le Pause with Kit without even knowing it was called Le Pause. Whereas with I did Luna, le I just ignore. ran around. <laughs> well, you did what? Le Ignore. Yeah, Le Ignore. <laughs> That's my one. It's not Le Pause, it's Le Ignore. <laughs> yeah, but like, you know, Kit's so much more chilled than Luna is because like, every, t- every time Luna like looked like she might even fall over or might even cry, I was running up to her going, are you okay? Because she was my first baby. So yeah. you get it, don't you, second time round. But yeah, I I love Manon. I think she's great. And also so I feel like I. if she does become our friend, she'll be able to take, teach us how to make like little madeleines and like all these other like buttery Imagine going things. to her house for like a coffee or a cup of tea. It would yeah. just be amazing, wouldn't it? Well, she's Probably listening like... to this, so hint, hint, <laughs> nudge, nudge. <laughs> yeah, can, can you invite us round, please? That would be fantastic. <laughs> uh, well, um, that's it for this um, Tuesday's episode. We're going to be back on Friday uh, with another Q&A. But as always, we would love you to rate, review, subscribe and follow the podcast. That just spreads the podcast name out there. Yeah, please. And do tag us when you're listening, where you're listening. We love to see it. Um, we're on at Made by Mummers on Instagram or on Zoe's own channel at Zoe Hardman. And we will be back on Friday. Made by Mummers is an Insanity podcast production. Insanity Group. <laughs>